Holy shit, Tony. We Are we actually doing this? I think we're actually doing this. Mike, <laughs> who are we? Well, this is developer commentary. I am Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And we are finally sitting down and recording Ratchet and Clank 3 after a, <laughs> an extended vacation, let's say. That's right. It's been a long time, a lot of requests to finally get back into it, and now it's time. And I've been telling everyone that it's your fault, and that, you, that's fair to say, right? I think it's your that's fault? fair. That's yeah. a fair criticism. I'll take the blame on that one. So, and if anybody is still listening out there, it's Tony's fault, and, you know, email him. Right. Well, I mean, I'm not the one who went on a cruise uh, when I was ready to go, and, like, set. Yeah, like, but, just like... disappeared. But, like, a month before that, I was set, and you're like, "Oh, I've got work and deadlines and yeah. crap." Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's let's just say we're both at a little bit of fault. All right, okay, I will share fault with you. <laughs> so, we're gonna do Ratchet and Clank Three. That's which right. Which was called Up Your Arsenal in America, and I think Ratchet and Clank Three abroad. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it had some sort of funny subtitle in the UK. But I don't know what it was. Well, uh, if, if any of you are from the UK, I'm too lazy to look it up, so just post below what it was called. And I hope there were funny subtitles in other languages, but I, I mean, I don't know. Yes, yes, if you, if you, you know, if you got the French version, what was it called? I don't know what German innuendo is for up your arsenal. Up, up the butt? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's see, we don't, I don't have anything interesting to say about the, uh, uh, attract mode this time. You know what we, you know what, Mike? I wish we had a theme song to just go in and make us happen. Like, <laughs> that would put me one step closer to my dream of telling somebody to hit my music. Like, that's, you know, oh, we should yeah. work on getting that on future episodes. I think yeah. that would, then we won't have to talk over the attract mode. Okay. All right, do you want me to uh, throw on Welcome to the Jungle and then we'll have you enter again? Well, anything that doesn't get us taken down you on YouTube, I think, would be <laughs> ideal. So I don't know what that is. We'll have to uh, yeah, find we something. Need, we need, like, a theme song built out of loops from Guitar Garage Band or something. Something, right? yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out in the future. Oh, Mary has come to our rescue. Apparently it was called Ratchet & Clank 3 in Europe, but in Australia it was still up your arsenal. Okay. According to Wikipedia, she says. Did we have... We didn't have any little secret clips in this attract mode, did we? I don't think so. Uh, well, we'll find out. Like, last time we had... No, it's it's looped already, so we, we didn't. Unless I'm wrong. Oh, man. I, if I look at the attract mode much longer, though, then uh, it'll spoil things. So we should probably get into it. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's get it started. Let's start with level zero of Ratchet and Clank 3, Up Your Arsenal. All right, no ratchet save, yes. I always thought it was weird that you had to press the circle button for yes uh, on this screen, but it was it was the TRC requirements. Really? Yeah, apparently you have to you have to use that button at least on the PlayStation Two. You did. All right. Oh, look at the nice orange HUD. That's right. Remember that was blue for like half the game, and then <sighs> poor Ricardo had to change everything at the last second. There's a lot to say about that HUD. <laughs> Let's save the HUD for one of those episodes where we don't have a lot to say, because and there's a lot to say about that HUD. Oh, maybe we can get Ricardo on to talk about it. Maybe. I don't know if he wants to relive it, but we can definitely try. Oh, all these models on here are just uh, Ratchet & Clank 1 models that they reposed. Like all the chess pieces. I remember like... when this when this cutscene got animated for the first time, it was the greatest thing I had ever seen. This was the raddest cutscene that, that has ever been in a Ratchet and Clank game, I think. No, Maximilian, I never lose. There is a first. I don't know who to give credit to for how amazing this cutscene was. Well, I there's think a lot it was of people, Oliver right? at this point still, right? Uh, the let's see. I know Brad was the writer on this game, but Oliver co-wrote it. Oliver and Lolly, I think, both had a a, a role in writing it. And then uh, animation-wise, was this Ryan? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I would think it was, but I mean, I don't want to give false credit. So if I remember correctly, Ryan did all of Ratchet's animations, right? He was the hero animator. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yes. Stay tuned for more secret agent. Oh, secret agent Clank! Such a good idea. I wish I could claim credit for that, but I can't. <laughs> 
So, while this is all happening, this was our second game that we've ever worked on as developers. Yeah. Uh, were you still a junior designer on this game, or you had moved up to regular? I had, I had moved up to full-on designer at this point. Um, and you, I think, were a full-on programmer, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. And what what kind of things did you have to do with this game? I mean, you did most of it, right? Uh, well, I wouldn't say most of it. I mean, it was a lot of the same from the last game. Uh, a lot of levels. Uh, I did a little bit more weapons on this one than I did in the last one, uh, I, which I, I will I, brag about later. I know on this game, you had the highest bug count of anybody that I've ever seen. Uh, I think that was true on the last game. I think I broke my own record. Like, I broke it on RC2, and then I broke it again on RC3. On this game, I think I came in second place for most bugs, because I was fixing frame rate problems on this But game. I imagine it was a distant second. <laughs> you, you had about a thousand more than I did. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. you say second, but I mean, that's not really... <laughs> that, that implies it was close, and it really wasn't. Well, the third place was just about as far away also, so... And so I think, if I'm remembering correctly, we're starting up with level zero. Yes, and always level zero. This was Jared and mm -hmm. myself, I think, were working in tandem to get this level done. So tell me a bit about uh, uh, like what went into this level, Tony. Uh, well, there was a lot. Uh, more the the biggest thing that went into this level were those robot soldiers that you see right in the beginning. Uh, uh, yes, those were done by Jared, I believe. Uh. He handled those guys in most of the in most of the game. Uh, yeah, you work on that camera. You make it happen. Son of a bitch. Keep going. And uh, I mean, they were that was a project to have to work on those guys like that was the whole game getting those guys to work was a nightmare yeah uh, i if i remember correctly that was that was mainly jared's task for most of the game yeah like i mean he had a lot of a lot of those guys and a lot of the bosses and a few of the levels but i mean that was his big big contribution to this game if i remember correctly also this level is the same starting level as ratchet one right Yes, because that's your... I think that we, you just came out of his garage, right? Or did we not come out of the garage? I don't know. I'm just Sorry. talking... Whatever. I'm, I'm still having camera problems. I think the garage is at the end, if I remember correctly. Okay. Why does it start inverted? That's retard... You know, I could go lock strafe, too. You Well, you definitely have to go lock strafe, because that's the way to play Ratchet and Clank <laughs> up your arsenal. <laughs> And if anybody doesn't play that way, you're playing it wrong, and you need to learn to play with lock straight. I have an interesting story about the Galactic Rangers. Let's hear your interesting story about the Galactic Rangers. And uh, you just cut off my amazing energy energy beam effect, but we'll see it again later. Oh, I'm sorry. So let's uh, hear your Galactic Rangers story. The Galactic Rangers' voice originally was a complete monotone... Uh, uh, you know, like, robot voice, I am talking like this, there are no intonation, like that, right? Uh, and I hated it. I thought it was terrible. So I committed probably one of the worst cardinal sins you can commit in game development, but I didn't know, I was new. I went around and took a... <laughs> I ran around with a petition and got everybody to <laughs> sign it, <laughs> saying whether or not they were pro or con. And then I presented that to, uh, uh, I think it was Brian Hastings, and he was, he was not too happy with me. <laughs> Uh, deservedly so. That was kind of a dick move on that my part. That is kind of not the thing you do. It's not the most diplomatic way to try to go about change. No, not games. at all. That somebody is me. We got a volunteer. Here, Sarge, take this. We'll cover you from back there. Try using the nitro launcher. So we give you the shotgun and the uh, uh, and the bomb first, right? And uh, that's. That's different from how it used to be. Uh, yeah, both of the one and two, we both start you off with a, a blaster and a bomb. And this one, we just went straight to the shotgun because the shotgun's pretty amazing. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, this is it. The lock strafe. We're lock strafing now, Tony. There you go. 
now there's no going back. There's no going back ever in Ratchet and Clank. Once you start lock strafing, you are in. You are done. Except, except the up down is wrong. <laughs> All right. Insomniac no, does love inverted controls. I think we went over this on the last game, but they love inverted controls at Insomniac. Well, what's awesome is, uh, oh god, sorry. The uh, uh, th they call it normal camera mode, but started off inverted. And look at that awesome laser beam. Whoever made that laser beam is pretty much a genius. <laughs> is that your final effect ever still? No, oh no, no, no. This was just straight up into the laser beam. Uh, I got I got chewed out a couple times for that laser beam. Uh, Why? Well, not chewed out, but there were disagreements. Because uh, Roberto was the lead programmer for, I think, at least part of this project. I don't think for the whole of the project. All right. Uh, and Roberto doesn't like my gigantic, big, bright, uh, super flashy effects. Okay. He thought they should be a little bit more subtle, and I don't believe in subtlety at all. You're not the subtlest person in the world. No, not not usually. And so there was a lot of conflict and back and forth about that maybe I should be toning down that laser beam a little bit. Because they were too ostentatious. They were too big. Yeah, exactly. But I didn't budge, and I just, you know, kept it big and flashy and shiny and full of particles, because that's how I do it. And if we're, we're talking about uh, Roberto, now owner of High Impact, right? Yes, that's right. Who went on to make uh, uh, met, uh, several Agent other Clank. Ratchet and Clank games. At Secret Agent Clank, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. Uh, so, you know, it, it's got a history here. God, I keep hitting the strafe button because I forget I'm in lock strafe. So if you see the camera lock up every so often, that's why. So I, most of my level duties in this game were doing the Tyranoids. So all the Tyranoids, I think all the Tyranoids were me, regardless of where they appear in the level, which was a big departure, well, regardless of which level they appear in, I'm sorry, which is a big departure for the way Insomniac used to do things, because we didn't do that at all. Oh, right. If the same model, if the same enemy model was in a different level... It was a use, different enemy, yeah. Yeah, someone would code it over from scratch. But in this one, we decided to just make me handle all of the Tyranoids and all of the levels. And, uh, I mean, that was part... That helped contribute to my wonderful, massive bug count by the end of the level. <laughs> the tier Oh, yes, because... Uh, they had to pathfind in every situation. Yes, that's right. Uh, eventually, you came up, and we'll probably talk more about this later. But you came up with the the, the hunter, the seeker. What was it called? Something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it hunter, was. I, think. I didn't use it as much as I would wanted to because it didn't. It wasn't as robust as I had hoped because I wasn't able to put as much time into it. But it did. It saved my ass on a few instances. So I think Ratchet's uh, that right there in the distance is Ratchet's uh, laboratory from the first game. Gotcha. Or his workshop, yeah. And we're about to go into it, which is exciting. <laughs> I remember on the first game I put in a bug saying that this building was too big for Ratchet to ever use. And I got an angry visit from Lloyd and another artist who were not happy with that being a bug. That's good. I mean, I'm glad that you managed to piss so many people off in the early parts of your game career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a good way to make sure that you continually get work if you just make people hate you over and over again. Right, yeah. Oh, this fucking transport thing, this was a this caused Carl Glaive no end of trouble. Yeah, that's right. Because it's all made out of ties. That's right. Which we're going to have to explain at some point. Uh cuz I think we've we've said before that no, oh Oh, I love this part. Oh yeah. This was also Jared. This was entirely Jared and he did a great job with this stuff. I love this mini game. I think this so was so epic. Designed by Brian Algar, uh, and I remember when he designed it because he was just taking the debug camera and cheating himself way up into the air, and then sort of seeing what it felt like to fall down. And he's like, "Hey, that's kind of fun," and he decided for it to be a mini game. I think when they originally prototyped it, they had Ride of the Valkyries playing in the background, <laughs> and it was so epic. But I, there was something happened, and they couldn't get a, a, a license to use the music. So, or, uh, this yeah. whole section, this is our big new feature for Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. Which is the big battlegrounds. Uh, this was our arena replacement. 
sort of thing. I, even though I think we still have arenas, this was our continuation of how arenas are gonna we're gonna go. Yeah, Just yeah, like arenas larger with scale stories. battles coming from all over the place. Like this Use is one of our much big, more big, big features. Sorry, continue. No, I was. This was just one of our big, our big, big features that we were trying to work on in this game. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't know if it was ever discussed, but this was out of these sort of battlegrounds that we built up here. That was a lot of the inspiration for where Ratchet Deadlock would eventually go, because exactly. we were so happy with the way that these turned out that we decided to expand on this even further, and that's where Ratchet Deadlock originally came from. That's a very generous way to say it, Tony, and very much in keeping with the first rule of this podcast, <laughs> which is do not talk shit. <laughs> uh, um, it's funny, I keep seeing things, and they keep making me want to talk about stuff, but we're going to blow everything in the first level if I do that. Like, uh, when the Tyranoids disintegrated, it was a shadow volume effect. Uh, this was the first game we started using those. That's right, and I think that was done by Keith. Yeah, uh, I think he learned how to do it right yeah and or uh pioneered it yeah I mean, we touched on it a little bit in the last commentary about how we had to do these ridiculous organic death effects and uh he trade he turned it into this awesome shadow volume effect so it actually disintegrated into the form that they were in and that was awesome it was amazing <laughs> it did look really good um oh i have a thing to say about this encounter uh this enc the entire purpose of this encounter is to teach you how to strafe and to suggest that you switch to lock strafe mode so you it like uh it was designed so that you jump up here and you're safe because there's this little wall in front of you but if you move out he'll nail you eventually so the key is you have to strafe because if you're if you're just doing the normal camera thing and then standing in one place it won't work Right. So it was also supposed to teach you about cover, which we we had a really hard time getting players used to in the last game. Sorry to interrupt you, Tony. No, it's you, fine. You Share your it. knowledge, Mike. We're we're here for both of us, not just for me. I'm obviously for... the main attraction, but you're here too. Oh, look! It's Bill Clinton, aka the Galactic <laughs> President. Now, is there a twist coming up with the Galactic President that we shouldn't spoil, or is I don't remember at the story very much? No, there's no twist. There's no the twist. President. He's just the guy. He's just the Galactic President. Was yeah. there any controversy about what particular race the Galactic President was? Uh, yes, but uh, they came up with a name for it. Uh, it's the same thing that Sasha is, but it's not a Lombax. They're not Lombaxes. And that was a large source of controversy for a while. At least on the Ratchet forums. Well, was, yeah. yeah, I mean, as, as controversial as it can get on the Ratchet forums, I suppose. Oh, shit! Nature's Mysteries! That's right. Oh, this is a... I can't believe we got away with this joke. I cannot believe it. Or maybe it weren't a banana. <laughs> oh, that one was Oliver. Oliver wrote it's that. It's so borderline. It's such a borderline joke. I can't believe we they, they let that through. In the, yeah, well, I mean, if we have an ass joke in the title of the game, I guess a dick joke probably isn't that bad. <laughs> I, it was flagged in the ESRB's uh, rating thing. Oh, was it really? Yeah, it, when we when we got back the uh, the report from the ESRB, uh, that that scene in particular was flagged as crude. Uh, uh, you know, uh, toilet humor or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, fairly, I think. Uh, so, that was episode one of Ratchet and Clank 3, Up Your Arsenal, developer commentary. I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And I can't fucking believe we actually got around to this. <laughs> Catch you later.